Henda Varimini, welcome to a special edition of Podcast and Chill. Uh, today I am joined uh, by a very special guest. Her name is Miss Patsy L. Adams, all the way from Los Angeles. How are you, Miss Patsy? I'm doing wonderful. I really am. I'm so excited to meet you and to be here with you and your audience today. I- I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited to talk about your book, man. And I'm not, I'm not much of a reader, but when I was reading your book, I just couldn't let it go. I couldn't drop it. It's one of those that you can't let go. Yeah, I, I'm really excited about it. I had a call from a friend who read the book in, I think, two or three days. And she called me and she said, I, you know, my house is a mess. <laughs> and I said, really? She, and she repeated it. She said, my house is a mess. So I didn't know whether she wanted me to come help her clean it or what. <laughs> and I said, what's the problem? She said, I have not put your book down since I got it. And so I'm excited. That's a lot of the response that I'm getting. And I'm grateful. I am. All right. So before we talk about the book, um, I just want to talk about you as a person. Uh, can you tell us more about who Patty L. Adams is? Uh, Patsy L. Adams was born in Jersey City, New Jersey, which is a little city between New York and Newark, New Jersey. I don't know if you're familiar with those cities. Mm -hmm. I know you are familiar with uh, New York. Um, And so I migrated uh, with my husband and uh, my son in 1969 to California. Uh, When I was a little girl, um, I used to watch Mickey Mouse Club. So I know I'm dating myself, right? (laughs) And I always (laughs) wanted to go to California Uh, to see Disneyland when Disneyland was born. And so I said to my mom, I said, Mom, take me to Disneyland. I guess I was about eight years old. And she said, oh, baby. She said, that's around the world. And so, but I always had this desire to want to live in California. Um, It was such a blessing because uh, when we did move, I was able to bring my mom and take her to Disneyland. And it it was great. Yeah, it was wonderful. Um, And so I started... um, reading books when I, before kindergarten. Uh, I loved books. Uh, My oldest sister, she was six years my senior. And so she would go to the library. Yes, we went to the library. (laughs) What is that? (laughs) So what is that, right? And so, and so she would take me with her. And so before kindergarten, I would just go and sit and kind of flip through the little pages of the books. I couldn't read or anything. But then as I got older, I began to realize that, and I could read and comprehend, that the words on the pages actually made my, and took took my imagination to places that I could not otherwise go. And then as I got even older, um, the where, the what, the why, the how uh, of a good mystery book just really turned me on. So Nancy Drew, uh, Ellery Queen, Agatha Christie became some of my favorite authors growing up. Uh, I still watch Agatha Christie movies today. And uh, currently, John Grisham uh, is my favorite, all-time favorite um, fictional novelist. Um, I grew up in church. I began singing in the choir uh, at the age of three in the youth choir, um, raised by wonderful, wonderful Christian parents. Um, in fact, came from a musical background. My whole family is musical. My oldest sister became a, a professor at the Juilliard School of Music in New York before she passed. Oh, wow. um, and so I just, yeah, uh, I traveled with my husband extensively. I even been to Nigeria. Oh. Yes, I went to Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I spent two weeks in Nigeria. It was fantastic. I loved it. And I, I encourage my children, young people, my grandchildren to travel. It is so important because your mind can be no broader than your environment, right? 100%. And so, um, it really, so you've got to get out there. I love traveling. I love people. I love the differences in people and the differences in culture. You learn so much. There's a great big world out there. So my husband and I, did. we did a lot of traveling. And, um, and so that's kind of where I'm at now. I started writing the book um, before he passed, way before he passed. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right. Now, take me back to the first time you had the idea of writing this book, The Light Side of Darkness. <laughs> like, what is happening? What is going through your mind? Well, it, was, it came from a vision or a dream. Honestly, I don't know what it was. 
But I know that in 2005, I had already retired in 2004. 2005, I had this vision of this dream, not sure what it was. And it was my grandson rescuing my granddaughter, my oldest grandson rescuing my granddaughter. And it was like she was in this tower. I don't know if you're familiar with the fairy tale of Rapunzel. Yes, yes. And it was yes. sort of like in this castle. Yeah. And I was in the room with them and I could hear their conversation. I could see it. It was a dark room, but I could see everything so clearly. And I woke up. It woke me up. And I remember jumping out of bed and I was saying, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I was walking around. What was that? What did that mean? And so it kind of stuck with me for several weeks later. And then in my quiet time, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to start writing a book. Mm. Well, I looked around because I didn't know who he was talking to. I've never written anything before. What do you mean write a book? And so I sat down, I was obedient, and I began to just start typing. And um, so since the grandchildren uh, inspired me, I decided to include all of them in the novel. So the, a lot of the characters that you're seeing, the young adults and all, those are my grandchildren. Wow. And uh, started out when they were young, and now they're all grown up. And, yeah, we're really excited about it. But they were the inspiration. Because you have a passion for the Lord and, and mystery books, like you said, was it easy writing this book? Um, no. <laughs> because I had no formal training. You know, mm -hmm. I, I really didn't. I had no formal education as far as writing is concerned. That's why I know that God wrote this book through me because I had no formal training. And, um, and so he began to download some things into me. I also, I didn't have the luxury of actually hiding in my closet or going to a retreat in the mountains in a mm -hmm. cabin in the woods and just riding all day and all night. I had a husband, I had children, I had grandchildren, I had my church activities, I had a life. And mm -hmm. so that's why it took so long, it took years. Um, I also found out that when you write a book, um, the beginning is so important. Uh, mm -hmm. Because if you don't captivate your audience within the first two paragraphs, you have the risk and the possibility of losing their interest. And so the beginning was very, very important for me, which was difficult because I didn't know where to begin. And so needless to say, I tore up a lot of things. I deleted a lot of things. And finally, until I felt in my gut that I had the right beginning. Um, also, when you're, when you're writing a book, you have to uh, do some research. In my book, I talk about replication and things like that. I had to do extensive research on cloning and replicates. I also included, um, now rem remember, this was way back in the day. Yeah. And so I also included computer programming, algorithm. Uh, I spoke about uh, all this new technology, which honestly, I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> and I still don't. I'm, I'm serious. I still don't. Mac, I just got on Facebook, what, three weeks ago, son? Wow. Three weeks ago. Wow. And I still don't know what I'm doing. And so <laughs> that's why I'm, I'm, I'm expressing this because I'm telling you, God gave me the idea for all of this way back when, knowing that the book would be released at this time uh, for this age group. For the, and they know all this stuff. I don't know this stuff, but that's what God had me, had me put it in the book. And so it's important that you do research. It's important to have a lot of patience, I'm telling you, because... You know, you think something is right, it doesn't fit. Also, a good book has to flow. Mm. The storyline, the plot, the plan, it has to make sense, you know? And I've read so many books where the characters were confusing, the plot was confusing, you didn't know who was doing what, where, how, and when. And so that had to, uh, you know, take time and, and mature and morph into, into what we have now. So was it easy? No. <laughs> but it, it was it worthwhile. Yeah. Yes, yeah. because now I see the fruits of my labor, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and I can encourage other people to pursue their dreams because they can come true. I'm living my uh, my long time life dream come true. I, I really am, and that was being a published author. That is amazing. I'm getting carried away because I've read the book, but um, I'm forgetting about people that might not have 
read the book. W- what's the book about? Would you mind uh, just giving us a brief explanation? Okay, let me try to be as brief as possible. I'm very <laughs> wordy, so that's kind of hard for me. <laughs> no, don't worry. That's why, versus... that's why we're doing a podcast. We've got more than enough time. Okay, good. All right. The book is basically about choices. Um, we all have, we all know right and wrong. Let's, let's face it, we do. But God has designed us uh, with a free will. Mm-hmm. And so we have an, an opportunity to do good or to, to do evil. And I was raised, my, my mother taught us that um, life is choice driven. And I taught my kids that. And you have the right to make any bad choice that you want, but you don't have a right to choose the consequences that are established and attached to that bad choice. And when you make that bad choice, it just does not only affect you, it affects other people in your family, folks that you're attached to, people around you. And so in the book, as you know, there were some bad choices that were made. Yep. And, um, and you saw there were a lot of consequences that were attached to that choice. Having said all that, I believe that even though we do make a bad choice, as long as we have breath in our bodies and with the help of God, that we can change the course of our lives. We don't have to continue down uh, the same pathway. Um, and then my hope from the book is that we can learn from our bad choices and, and correct the course of our life. Um, that's very important. So the book basically is about choices and it's about good versus evil. Yep. I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's one of the topics that um, you tackle in the book very thoroughly. Uh, would you care to explain more and just deep dive on the concept of good and evil? Um, well, as, as, far, as far as the book goes, we, we know there's good. We know there's good. Um, But sometimes we forget that there's evil influences uh, Mm -hmm. that motivate us as well. And so we have to be very cognizant of our choices. We have to be very cognizant of the decisions that we make, the people we hang out with, especially young people today, Mm -hmm. um, the drugs that you can or cannot take. There's always this evil force that is bent on destroying humankind. There's always been a war between God and Satan, let's face it. And so uh, God has given us an opportunity to be redeemed, which I think is very important. Um, And so it it always goes back to the choices uh, that we make. Mm -hmm. Um, The enemy is powerful, yes, but we have a God that's more powerful than he is. Yeah. And so we just need to be aware of what's around us. Be aware of our surroundings, especially young people, because they can get so caught up. A thing may look good. It may look good on the outside. Um, and it may seem like it's okay to do this thing, but is it expedient? Is it right? You know, and so we have to take, we have to take stock of that. And I, and I wanted um, uh, to put that portion in the book. I won't talk about it. But where the young person gets involved, there's, there's even uh, talks in the book about cults mm. and, and things like that, that our young people need to be aware of. There's so much evil out there to tempt our young people and adults. You know, we, we, we do some bad things, too. Yeah. But we have to keep our focus on what is the good in life. And mm. basically, I think if we treat others like the Bible said, treat others like you would want to be treated. I really believe the world, I know the world would be in a much better place than we are right now. You know, we've got this saying in, in South Africa, it's called Ubuntu. Um, and what is it? Say it. Ubuntu. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Ubuntu. <laughs> Okay, Ubuntu. I yeah. like it. You, you, you just basically explained what Ubuntu is about. You know, it's about treating other people the same way you don't want to be treated. And the moment we started having the Zoom call, I could tell, even though we've never spoken, that you have Ubuntu because you went straight uh, without even saying anything else and asked me about my family. You know, that's Ubuntu. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, Ubuntu. I like that. We're gonna use that, kids. Ubuntu. 
I love Africa. I had the best time when I was there. It was awesome. It was like I just went yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you give us a background about um, some of the characters? I know they were inspired by your grandkids. Uh, can you just talk more about that? Yes. Um, the, uh, one of the main characters, of course, is Uriel, which means uh, God is light. And he is the king and the ruler of this fabulous, enchanting paradise uh, that uh, Janu and Ariana were born and raised in. Um, his nemesis, his eternal nemesis, is Prince Diablo. And he's in charge of the, uh, he's the ruler and the potentate of uh, Caress. And Caress means the place of evil spirits. And that is across the river. There's a divide. So you have good on one side, and then you have evil on the other side. Those are two of the characters. Then the main characters, it starts out with a husband and a wife. It's almost like Adam and Eve. Mm. And they're in paradise. They have a beautiful home. They, you know, they have everything. The king takes wonderful care of them. But then they're kind of tempted to, what's going on across the water? I know we're not supposed to go, but let's kind of check it out. Mm -hmm. And so they do. And they go against Uriel's command. And so they go, and here again, we're talking about choices. They made a choice. But when they got there, they figured out that they were captive and they, they couldn't escape. And their whole journey throughout the book was trying to get back to the paradise that they had regretfully abandoned. Um, uh, uh, the children, they had two children, uh, Sierra, my grandchild, and uh, Isaiah. Uh, both of them are my real life grandchildren. And um, Sierra is beautiful. She is beautiful on the outside. She's beautiful on the inside. She's very intelligent. But there's something in her soul that she feels there's more to her life. And she's seeking after her, her purpose. Whereas Isaiah is, because that's all he knows, is caress the place of evil spirits. He's beginning to morph into something that his parents are not happy with. And he's beginning to defy all of his parents' beliefs, because they still had that fei mentality, that paradise mentality, even though they are held captive in caress. And then my favorite cap character uh, is Mela. We don't know about Mela. We don't know if we can trust him. Uh, we don't know where he's coming from. But he is determined on helping uh, Janu and Ariana to return to their paradise. But why? What is his motive? You know, we don't know. Um, and so that's just some of the characters. The rest, your audience will have to discover on their own. And, and taking uh, into account the current state of the world right now, um, what impact do you think your book can have, uh, especially, you know, since it's all about making choices? Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it's going to help a lot of young people uh, because there's so many young people within the book and I believe that's why God had me constructed this way, so that young people can identify. Because we talk about cult, we talk about clones, we talk about replicates, we talk about so many things. Um, and I just want the young people to, to learn to make good choices, to not be deterred by all the glam and the glitter that is, that is around them. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. Yes, yes. It's not, not everything is about aesthetics. Right, right. What mm. looks good all the time is not necessarily good or good for you. Yeah, you know? 100%. So I'm really reaching out to the young people. I want them to make good choices. I want them to use their talents and abilities that God has given them and not go off on some crazy path that will only lead to destruction. And, and in all your life, have you ever seen anything as crazy as the COVID-19, what we're going through right now? No, not in my years. Not ever, ever. Wow. Ever. But, I, but I have to say this, Mac. I believe that um, Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. All good and perfect things come from the Father. You know that. And so I don't believe that God did this, but I believe he allowed it. Mm. And he's allowing it to shut the whole world down. We mm. really, literally have gone crazy. Mm. And so now we find that more people are turning their lives back to the Lord. More people are realizing that nobody can help us. Not the president, not anybody. No man. 
can change the situation. Nobody but God can turn this around. And so he has us on this lockdown. So what? So that we can hear him, that we can get back to where we used to be because the world is crazy. You know, mm -hmm. what's right is wrong. What's wrong is right. Everything is upside down. And so God wants to set it right again. But we're so busy. We, we are the busiest people. We're so busy, we run past ourselves at times, you know? Yeah. Going where? To do what? And we need to slow it down. Um, and, and that's some of what's in the book, too. Because in Caress, you have all the computer. The Caress is like, like the, the world now. With all this technology and all these things going on, everybody's hustling and bustling. Whereas you look at the paradise across the river in Faya, how peaceful. There's no computers. There's none of that stuff over there. There's nothing but love, right? And tenderness and gentleness and treating each other the same way. No greed, none of that. This world is so greedy. They don't even care about the lives that have been lost. All they care about is the economy and the, yeah. and the, and the bottom line. Yeah. And it's terrible. So right. this, it's a mess, but I still believe that God is going to get the glory out of this. Because a lot of people are realizing that he's the answer, the only answer. No, I totally agree. Uh, so can you expect to see the book uh, turn into a series or maybe a movie on Netflix? Anything like that in the pipeline? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not dissing that. I don't know. I'm not sure about the series. Um, because the prequel is out right now. The book was so long that my son here, who is a genius, who won an Emmy several years back uh, for his production work on KTLA Channel 5 in Los Angeles. And he's my agent, too. God gave me a free agent. So far. <laughs> <laughs> so far. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so, um, so he decided, which made sense, that we would cut the book in two because people would get tired, you know, if it's too, too long. Yeah. And so we cut it in two. The prequel is out now. And the sequel is already done. It's been done for years. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're just waiting to launch that. Um, in saying that, I'm busy really right now tweaking uh, the sequel, which is going to take some time. And so, and hopefully my son is working even now on turning the book into a movie. That, that is the ultimate goal. It really is. And also... Uh, Matt, we're um, having it translated into many, many different languages, mm -hmm. and we're also making an audio of the book. So there are a lot of good things going on. So that's my focus right now. Um, could be a series. We don't know. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying no to anything. Anything. As I don't even, even believe I could get this far. Yeah. You know? as, as long as I have a part to play in the in the series or movie, I'm happy. Okay, you got a part. <laughs> what, what is it? You got a part. We're going to give you a part. <laughs> we're going to fly you in. Yeah. Are, you sure, are you sure your name is not Oprah? You get a part. You get a part. <laughs> Everybody gets a part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how I wish, right? <laughs> yeah, because, uh, you know, we need somebody with an accent now. Remember that. Yeah, yeah. In the book. We yeah. need somebody with a good accent. Yeah. Well, you never know. You make you make it a call. Yeah. All right, Miss Patty <laughs> L. Adams. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, just in closing, tell us more about the virtual book signing event. When is it going down? Where can people check it out? Oh, the virtual book signing event. I am so excited about that. Um, we're going to. I'll be joined with uh, hundreds of my family and my friends from around all the states. Um, it's going to be a time of um, gift giving away. We have musical, live musical entertainment. We have all kinds of things going on. Grand prize giveaways. And you know, Matt, we had originally had it all set up. We had the venue, we had the caterers, we had the DJ, we had the live entertainment. Um, and it was supposed to be last Saturday, May 16th. Mm -hmm. Everything was set up way back in March. But because of the pandemic, of course, we had to cancel that. So we're looking to have a great, great time. Um, it's also going to be live streamed on, uh, I believe it is Amazon. Yeah. Not Amazon. Is it Amazon? Live stream? I, I can't remember. Help I me out. I think it's Zoom or something like that. I think it's, it's live, a live stream on, on Facebook. Amazon. 
on Facebook. Facebook, yes. Facebook, <laughs> yes. And it's also going to be recorded, Matt. So if some people can't join us, and it's going to be on Saturday, June 13th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And for those that can't join us, since it will be recorded, um, they can go back and see the actual virtual book signing. Uh, we're very excited about that. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. So if I'm listening right now, I want to get a hold uh, of the book, um, how can I go about doing that? Well, it's available on uh, thelightestoutofdarkness.com. It's also available on Amazon, um, eBay, uh, Barnes & Noble, and Apple Books. Uh, and if your uh, audience would like to check out the ratings, they can do that. And they can do that on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. So far, we have garnered rave reviews. Yes, we have. And so that's a blessing. But uh, it's available on, um, and also, isn't it available, I think, and if they want to follow us, then they can follow us on um, Instagram and Facebook. Awesome. Uh, I checked out your website and there's a quote there that I really, really like. Uh, it says, we all want what's best in life, but sometimes what we, really, what we already have is better than what we wish we seek. Right. And Did that make sense? That's in the introduction eh? in the book. Yes. 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 That's, that's in the introduction in the book. That's what God gave me to put there. Yeah. Because as you know, we're always seeking and looking for something better, but sometimes we could just stay still. And I think that's why we're in this shutdown and yeah. just appreciate what we already have. That's so deep. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Uh, and I love you, Miss Patsy Adams. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. I love you too. I fall in love with you too. <laughs> <laughs> God sent me to I'm you. I'm hoping you can, you, you can come to, yes, really. Yeah. I, I'm serious. You can come to, why don't you come to California and visit? That would be awesome. Definitely. I'd love to. I've never been to America, so it'd be great. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, you're long overdue. I've been you to Nigeria you like you. <laughs> You've been to Nigeria? Yeah. yeah. I was in Benin City in Lagos. Lagos. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. It was great. But yeah, come to, come to the States. You know, we show you a great time. My son knows everybody. So yeah, you would but, have a ball. <laughs> as long as I don't get shot, I'm, I'm happy. As long as you don't get shot? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> we'll keep you. We'll keep you safe. We'll keep no, you safe. I'm Absolutely. kidding. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss Betsy Adams. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And can I say something before we end? Yes, definitely. I, you know, I really, really, I'm going back to, I want to encourage people that have dreams. I'm in my mid-70s, right? And I am realizing my dream come true. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. God has given us all dreams and visions, talents and abilities. And a lot of us, for whatever reason, especially, you know, our, our black communities, we're not utilizing those talents and abilities. So to your audience, I know that they have dreams. I know that they have visions. And I would encourage them to uh, take those visions and dreams and dust them off. You know, if you've written them down and you've hit them somewhere, take them out, dust them off, take them before God and ask him to help them to visualize and to make it uh, real, the vision that God has, has given them. Uh, I hope I'm making sense. But my, my main thing is to encourage people to follow their, chase your dreams. That's what I'm trying to say. Chase them and chase them until they become a reality. Wow. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you so much, Ms. Patsy L. Adams. Uh, check out her book, www.thelightersideofdarkness.com. It's been a pleasure and all the best. Thank you so much. It was so nice meeting you, Max. Stay safe, okay? Will do. <laughs> all right, dear. Bye -bye awesome. Bye for now.